Hello, in today's video, I am going to be servicing my 2009 Infiniti FX50. This is lubrication related, engine oil. Before doing the job, I mean, way, way before doing the job, I come here, look at my owner's manual. I have a section bookmarked. So I just pull this and go all the way to the back. This is section number nine, technical and consumer information and it's going to be capacities and recommended fuel and lubricants. There's engine oil and things like that going on as well. So first page tells me the capacities, right? If I'm doing an oil change without an oil filter, the VK50VE is a V8 engine. I need only six and an eighth quarts. However, if I'm doing an oil and oil filter change, I will be looking at seven and an eighth quarts these are U united states units so just keep that in mind okay and right here if you look over to the side it does tell you that this is the certification you need for your engine oil 5w30 so i look at this book just to get started and this lets me know what my shopping list should be so even before coming to the job even before preparing for the job i need to make sure i've got at least seven and eight so eight quarts 5w30 i go for synthetic um i'm not an i wouldn't say i'm an oil brand snob pens oil has been working pretty well for me i've had bad luck with different brands as well so i'm back to pens oil so eight of these and i usually mark these because i use the same jugs whenever i'm pouring back in and i usually try to know well they sold me you know uh, whatever the five quarts when I pour it back in what exactly is five quarts and then I usually mark the other ones for half a quart and full quart as well so I've got that and then I've got an oil filter this is an OEM oil filter 15208 I could put these part numbers in the description box if someone asks can you hear that rattling in there it's the crush washer for the drain plug this is the part number from Nissan I usually buy them you know in a pack of 10 and then here these vehicles have oil coolers and sometimes those leak i usually have a few of these on hand but i believe one of the motivations to actually bring it here today is that uh last time i did an oil change i saw a little bit of uh, weeping and i wiped it but it looked like it was still getting a little damp so i just have this in hand in case i need to replace it and then tools i've got 10 millimeter tool for the under tray bolts for 10 millimeter for the drain plug bolt if it is oem then i've got some oil filter removal tools just in case my hands can do it so that is what you make sure you have on hand keep that stuff you know for for when you'll be doing your job buy it if you need to on the day of the project first thing is make sure you've got a jack to raise it to gain access underneath there get a jack stand to secure drain uh, drain pan that can hold at least seven and an eighth, right? So that's one of the reasons I look at that book. Make sure whatever you're draining into can catch all that stuff. And before starting out, I also come here. I look at my stick over here, pull this. This is my dipstick. And right now I can see that mine is very close to L. So that means it's one quart from max level. The distance between H and L, high and low, is usually about one quart. So in my mind, if I were to do a drain and fill, I, I would make it up to get it to the proper level. I should be right around seven and an eighth. However, when I drain it, I will get a little less than that. Sometimes I've seen people do this, they drain and they put the same amount back in and just forget about it, which can be a little challenging because you actually lose some, some of the oil through the oil filter and what you measure might not be perfect. On the other hand, I've seen other people just do it blindly. They read the book and then just pour in seven and an eighth. So I just drain that just to kind of keep an eye on it. But when I'll be filling it back up, I actually start slow. Instead of putting the whole seven and an eighth in, I'll just put in six first, look at the dipstick, see where that settles in, and then I can add the, the one and an eighth later. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and raise the car so I can get underneath there, remove the under tray, and get better access. So before going too deep, let me show you the underside of the vehicle. This is the under tray I'm referring to. It covers the bottom of the engine. You have an oil drain plug over here. Thankfully, this one has an access panel right here. 
So if you look inside here, you should be able to see the drain plug. There it is. And if you aim properly, you could drain oil from here without having to remove anything else. However, we have an oil filter as well. And the oil filter is located somewhere around here. So I need to remove this for the sake of getting better access. And number two, I like removing the drain pan, the under tray, so I can get better access and look at my belts and all these other things. If all I was doing was just an oil replacement, no filter, then it would, it would be pretty easy. Just come here drain this and keep moving okay so i'm going to remove this and as you can see i've got 10 millimeter bolts where i have them in certain places so that's my next step just remove these uh, these bolts just remove these bolts and then set the tray off to the side at this point i have removed the fasteners any bolt that was in here, I removed and this thing is hanging loose. I've only got one left right now, but before pulling it all the way out, I wanted to point something out. When you pull this backwards, you'll notice that there's a tab and another one here. Two tabs that during installation actually go over, they go inside. I don't think anything too serious could happen. Immediately you forget them and install them this way, but I just figured I'd mention that for ease of installation. Okay, I'll remove this and it will keep working. All right, here we go. First, I check out for any fluids that I might have leaked. This looks thick, it looks like power steering fluid. Not sure if that's coolant or water. And that area is damp right there. This is the area that I was telling you. This is where the filter is. The filter itself is fine. But, as you can see on the back side of the filter, this is an oil cooler. So it's got coolant on one side, oil on the other side from the oil pan. This is an oil pan. Lower oil pan, steel. Upper oil pan, aluminum. So that's been leaking oil. As you can see, this dampness over here. And if you never um, come underneath here, if all you do is gain access to your bolt, and drain it from there you might never notice that this has a problem as well now is that a big deal i mean it's not so much oil but if it consistently keeps leaking eventually you might lose a significant amount of oil i don't think this is where my entire well i don't know i don't know if this is where my entire one quart of oil has gone gone to but i can see some dampness over there as well I believe my valve covers are leaking also. So I don't think this engine burns oil in itself. I don't think so, but all these are the leaks is where my oil is going. So now what I'm going to do is set this aside, secure the car, open this drain bolt. I might open this one first. I'm not hundred percent sure. Eventually I need to remove this, remove the oil cooler so that I can service the back. That's the seal I was talking about. Let me get this one first because most of the oil is going, going to be coming out of here. This is about the time you usually wish you had gloves. And I, I would, it's just that the car hasn't been run in such a long time. But it's still warm enough that it's not as thick, you know. If you've ever tried to change oil in the winter, you know why I'm talking about that. So let me move that to the side, just break this open. Crack it loose. Okay. Bring this back. Well, I have to take one for the team. I did not want to block you. Yeah, it's really cool down here. It's not a big deal. Okay, go. It looked clean up top, didn't it? But look at how dirty it is down here. So this bolt I'm trying to wipe up has that washer. See the copper washer? I've actually seen people reuse these, but they're so cheap that I wouldn't want to risk my engine over 
a one dollar piece of metal why not just do it and especially if you get a leak down here it's the lowest point of your oil system you're going to lose it all or almost all of it so one thing i'd like to address is that why is my car why did i only jack one side well as you can see here my drain plug is on the left side oh, sorry it's on the right side of the vehicle the passenger side but right now it's on the left side of the view of the camera that's why i jack that side to get as much oil as possible out this way and then it's also towards the back a little bit so when you lift the front front left corner the front driver corner you lift this side here this side and it drains as much as possible down there. I don't get too anal about draining everything. You might not get everything, completely everything, but it still drains quite a good amount. So usually I just let it keep dripping like this. And what I do, because I've got quite a large pan, I move this pan this way. Keep the drip on the corner, at the corner right here. Okay. So it's still dripping into the corner. Secure this somewhere. And now what I do is I focus my attention up here onto the oil filter. You can see I've got dates and stuff. Now that is something I am anal about. Recording dates and mileages. Yeah, I do that. So right now, my my drain pan is far enough that even when I crack this open, it's still going to drip down there. Let's go ahead and try it by hand. As I said, sometimes I can do it. Well, there you go. You don't have to tighten the snacks out of your oil filter, just so you know. It's a rubber seal, so once you've made contact, it's good enough. I'm still keeping an eye on that side, still dripping in the drain pan. I might get a big splash right around now, once the oil filter comes all the way out. There you go. So I just set this down here. And I let it drip for a while, but what I'm going to do, now that I see where it's dripping from, I'm going to, no, I'm, I will, what I usually do is I take this time to set everything up, get the mileage on my new oil filter. But what I, I'm going to do right now is before lowering it back down so that it just keeps dripping, I'm going to get the tool to loosen this because I confirmed that this part is leaking, right? All right, hope you can see all the way in there. This bolt is a 22 millimeter bolt and I've got 22 millimeter tools here. I like going with hand tools because I can get a feel for how tight it is. I do have a torque wrench as well, but something about hand feel. So here's the catch. You want something deep that allows this depth to go in into the socket, but I suppose not too long that you can't even get it in here. A standard deep socket will work. Okay, there we go. See how loose it was? I did not even, I could have done it by hand. So that's usually one of the funky things is that sometimes they seem to just loosen by themselves. See, we're dripping a little more now, huh? I need to get a towel. So at this point, my concerns or my desire for feeling it by hand is kind of a little bit of a moot point was loose. What's there to remember about that? As I said, oil circulates in there. That's what should be dripping. At least that's how they planned it coolant is more in the closed system so you can't really see it you're using coolant to cool the oil and it's crazy to think about it but even hot coolant is still still a coolant because of the high specific heat capacity of water which is you know half of coolant should be water 
There you go. See, that's that's a culprit right there. So let that drip for a little while. Get my tools close by. So this threaded part goes all the way into the aluminum oil pan. This part right here sticks out. And this is where you, you use this hex part to, you know, to tighten it down. And then the stud right here is where the oil filter goes on to. So see, this is why I have to remove the under tray. This is why I want to remove the under tray. I want to see it all. Don't want anything to remain hidden from me, you know? There you go. So at this time, I'm pretty much done with here. The job is not full, it's not complete, no. But um, I, I would like to give it a little more time to drip. So what I'm going to do is lower the vehicle back to flat position. I might get a little more from here. I might get more or less from here. I really don't know, but I'm just going to give it time. As I said, I'm not too crazy about draining every last drop from it. I just want to drain as much as I reason reasonably can. As you can see, this is already taking way longer than a standard oil change because there are people that do oil changes for you in 10 minutes and you're done. But I'm doing it on my own vehicle. The time investment is, when you look at it on a dollar basis, probably just I'd rather pay somebody to do it, but the knowledge and the intimacy I have with my vehicle, that's that's priceless. That's why I still do my own oil changes. All right, so let's lower it. So for me, the next steps are I should have checked this earlier, but got hung up on something. Um, putting the key ignition in the second position. Remember, do not start it. No foot on brake at all. I usually leave the key outside the vehicle. I'm just looking at the mileage, 216, 989. All right, so this is like my next steps while setting up one. Make sure I've got my little drain drain plug washer there. It is a drain plug gasket. 116, 989, right? I write it back here. Usually it comes out way better than that. I don't know what it did here. <laughs> and it's June 4th. America, we start with a month. It just is. Can't explain it. Except July 4th, 4th of July. Okay, then I do the same thing here. This paint is pretty good, it stays on. I write it in as many different places so that when I turn it there, I don't. I don't like fully do it just to, just to appease like the June 4, 22, writing in many different ways, 116989, well yeah when I do it I don't like clock it in a way that it has to be read, but I try to set myself up for success, right? Write it here, write it here, so that I can see it at least somewhere, either from the bottom, from the top, you can usually see it from here, or when you look at it straight back, okay? So now we're about to lift the car back up and get ready to install this. Sometimes to assist the draining process, I come here and open the Philip cap gave access to the filler neck just to allow some air in but 
I found that the difference is not that dramatic. As long as I've opened the oil filter, it drains pretty well, but I'll leave that open for a little while. And then I usually put the key right there. Let's you know, hey, there's something related to what's going on here. So that nobody accidentally picks up the key and goes to start the vehicle. To get ready, one of the first things I do is I secure the bottom, the lowest hole in the system. Sometimes you end up needing a, a blade of sorts. What I'm doing is turning this. I'm trying to turn it counterclockwise until it comes off. As I said, I might need to get a tool, a blade, key, flathead, screwdriver, but right now, seems like we're having decent success. So watch it, just look at it, right? Can you see how it looks like right now? The reason I'm saying that is that, again, it doesn't matter too much, but there's a side to it. See this side versus this side. It doesn't make a big difference. Once you flatten it like this and you want to reuse it, what's the difference, right? But I do that because I usually just remember that during installation, clean it up, you want the smaller end to go in first and that's what's going to catch your threads. And then just go clockwise till it gets to the bottom as I said, you can get away with reusing it. You can get it an aftermarket washer. I just choose to use a Nissan one. Why not? Okay. So this is, we should be ready to go ahead and start patching things back up. All right, we are back under the vehicle. And as you can see, there's still a little bit of a drip. I feel like it drips more when it's tilted. If I cared so much, I would, I could go farther. I could tilt the car more low, you know, raise the front all the way up but as i said i'm not freaking out over it because some good oil is better than no good oil i wanted to say new oil but i guess sometimes you'd rather use your old good oil than new oil for the sake of new oil okay i have to contort myself because i want to show the video what i'm doing once you put this in it kind of plugs that little drip so no big concern here I just wipe it in a kind of like motion. And then go. And if you can get close enough, well, I, I have control over that, I guess. You'll see that at this point, the, the still, there's some contact, yeah, but not fully there. All right, so as you can see, there's a little bit of a gap. So hand tightening it would be a little deceiving because it could always go more. So what I do, there's a torque spec for it. 25 foot pounds is what they want. So if you really have a torque wrench, have at it. But I think if, mo if we're to be honest, most people just do it by hand. And I understand why, 14 millimeters. I do understand why. Reason is, you could go by torque and end up not being tight enough and still cause a leak. Some of those specs are set up with new parts in mind, but with the many different people that work on cars, who knows what's been done to your vehicle? Who knows how stripped it is? Thankfully, mine is an OEM unit and it's still a 14 millimeter. I've seen others where they use the, you know, auto store part like just a standard thread SAE thread so you could see this as either helping the torque wrench or just doing the job of the torque wrench feels interesting when it's a washer and it slips sometimes I think that's it but let's test it out with a torque wrench how far are we from? I could be more than 25, you know, that's a crazy thing. It says I'm already there. There you go. So that's, uh, hand, hand tighten is good enough in my, well, not hand, I guess, but tool, using a tool. 
Then I wipe it down just to make sure nothing else comes down the line. We should be fine. I use that same napkin to clean up whatever I can before it gets 100% dirty. So this is a little bit of missed footage. I thought I hit record, but apparently not. I removed the gasket from between the oil cooler and the oil pan. And I was showing you this, that when you remove a used one, you'll notice that there's a sharp cut edge over here. And then there's a more rounded surface. This one here is a, uh, is a side that's in contact with the oil cooler. And you'll notice there's a protrusion here and another one right here. Perpendicular to this line, there's a depression here and another one here okay so take this out and the new one instead of having the orange brown one you get a black one and what's funny is that this one looks the same on both surfaces okay so I'm about to go in there and I'll tell you why this one looks the way it does and why we're even talking about minor things like depressions okay So I've cleaned this up. I cleaned the back surface, I cleaned this surface as well. Yes, there's a little bit of drip going on, but nothing too serious, nothing to get me too worried. I'd like you to look inside here. Do you see this? And this, and this, yeah. That's where those features on the working side look like. And to say this, I'm talking about this because it's important to when you decide to remove it and you don't have a brand new seal to put back in. If you took the old seal and removed it and you inadvertently rotated it from its home position, you might end up creating a leak path. So if you were to re re reuse a seal that fell out when you removed it or whatever happened, just make sure that when you do so, you return it right in the correct, clock it correctly. That's all I can say. For me, since I'm using a new one, I'm not going to fret. Usually with sudden seals, I put oil, but this one I want it to go in dry. I want it to hold itself as best as it can. Yes, there's a little bit of oil dripping, but it's going to be in oil service, so I'm not freaking out about that. It's a little bigger, fits awkwardly. Hey, we're in. All right, so now do you see these two teeth over here? Make sure that this goes in right here. There's a there's a male part right here. So the, that's all I'm going for now. Still on, that's good. I cleaned both surfaces. Right now it's hard to hold it. It could go either up or down. Right now it could go either up or down. So this is what we're going to use to get centered. There you go, found it. The torque spec here is 36 foot-pounds. So if you trust in yourself, I guess you could wing it, but I'm gonna employ my torque wrench for this. There you go, clickety click. We got 36 foot pounds. Now, I'm one of those people that sometimes, I'm not tempting fate, but I just really wanna know. What's up? That way. Okay, had a little more. Just forget that you saw that part. <laughs>
Reason is, if it came loose with the factory recommended torque, I'd rather R on the side of plus rather than minus. Well, you don't want to go too much either. You don't want to break, that's aluminum right there. You don't want to cause a problem. Have you ever had this happen to you where you're tightening something, tighten, 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 then boom, suddenly gets loose. <laughs> this is the worst place to have something like that happen. So now I'm cleaning it, make sure everything's good. Then again, wipe the excess over there. And the reason to do this is that if it leaks again, I'd like to know, you know. Wipe whatever's under here. There might be a little bit. Nope, dry as a bone. And now, I know I did mention that sometimes I skip the recommendation to lubricate seals, but for the oil filter, I usually lubricate it. All right, just a little bit. Just dip my finger in. Oh, really? Put it somewhere, can't kick it. I just rub my finger on that lip. Looks clean to me. And now go ahead and do this. So if you over tighten it, you're more likely to loosen that stud when you remove it. So what we're gonna do, it feels tight-ish. I usually go like one or two more like this. I can read the numbers from down here, but I can also go a little more and read them from up top. There you go, that feels nice and good. I do not have to use tools, no grunting, it's, it's fine. And this is the part I was talking about. Right now, the camera can see these numbers. I cannot really see the numbers unless I use a camera. I can't see anything down here, but maybe from the top I can. Maybe, maybe not. I don't really know. It's not a big determinant. If I really need to see the mileage, I'll come down here and check, okay? So that's pretty much it. Got that. I got the drain, uh, drain plug at the bottom, the bolt. I've got this one here. So the next thing is to just add oil and see how much, see if any, any of the oil drips down. Before going up and give everything another wipe down, there might be a little bit of oil from, you know, the oil I put on the lip. Wipe the back side of this, still dry. It's got gunk, but it's not dripping. Wipe this. Okay, dirty, but not dripping. All the way in, I'll be pouring oil right here in the oil filler neck. So I'll be using a funnel because I wouldn't like to cause any spills. We've talked about spills and how they can confuse you because they look like valve cover gaskets leaking, right? So funnel to prevent mixing with other stuff. I keep it in this container keep it clean but I still give it a nice decent wipe down then we're pretty much ready to go I do wipe this one occasionally one thing I'd like to mention is that make sure this stick is all the way in and then let's go ahead I'm going to start with my five quart jug right here. And as I said, just make sure that as much as it says it can take up to seven and seven and an eighth, don't just blindly do a whole seven, you know? I pour a good chunk of this, turn it sideways so it doesn't go splashing. Maybe you want to see that. I trust myself quite a lot. That's why I'm going all in. I'd say I'm about two and a half quarts in right now. I'm going for the entire five, and then I'll go down and check, make sure nothing's dripping. 
but I mean you could stop at two maybe three but sometimes it's not the quantity is not the level will not be high enough to to leak maybe just the drain plug but the oil filter I don't think he'll be there yet so let's talk about that weird discrepancy between if you're doing an oil change without the oil filter it's just um, six and an eighth but if you're replacing the oil filter it wants seven and an eighth why a whole quart well you've seen the oil filter the oil filter is definitely not able to hold one quart by itself however when you combine the capacity in the oil filter the oil cooler all that stuff that gets held in there you could hold quite a lot i don't think it's a whole quart yet but it's quite a lot so that's why i usually say don't just say well i replaced the oil filter so i'm going to pour in a whole you know seven and an eighth i just kind of played play by ear i might put six and then watch but for now we've got um we've got five let's go underneath the vehicle and check i usually put this back up just to plug it you could put a paper towel if you want it works the same way all right underneath here this is just a check remember i wiped everything dry right that looks good check this one here all good this one here all good so as i said to trust the work of my hands however one thing to keep in mind is that we're not really running the vehicle yet this is just oil with gravity right once we run the vehicle we, we can take another look and see if anything else is spilling for now i'm going to set everything back down because at least i'm confident it's not dripping okay set everything down so i can pour oil and check that level it's kind of useless at this point but i'll just check the dipstick oil is barely it's yeah i don't know let me let me do this again because i never really wiped it the first time i just looked because it had been sitting a long time okay now i know that the hole is is empty right stick it in there check still dry right so let's go for one quart a whole quart so here it is i have my bottles marked one quart although it is brand new All right, I'm going to give it a little bit of time to rest and come to level. It does take oil a little bit of time to to travel. And it flows better when it's warm outside, like today. Doing an oil change in the winter, sometimes you just have to go by faith and run the engine and see if it comes down and relaxes. Otherwise, with this, it shouldn't take too long. However, we're not going to waste time. I'm going to take this old oil over here and then pour it in here see how much I get see that number is just a guide it's not end all and be all but it's going to give me a guide as to how much oil to expect to put in most of it came here a little bit of it is still stuck in the oil filter Again, this takes a long time. This is not $20 worth of oil change. This is, it's like a $150 oil change. If I wanted to take it a step further, is take this oil, take it into an, an analysis lab. Okay, five quarts coming up. As I said, the focus on the right things, it's not like I'm hung up on 
draining all of it. I just want to know that I'm replenishing what I take out. That's my main concern right now. This one here has already been drained. Can you see this? It's right at the mark. Let's try this one here as well. All right, that's it. I got, this is about 20, 20 ounces. So a little more than, than half, you know, it's what, five and five and a half quarts out. Assuming that the oil filter, yes indeed, did hide another whole half a quart. So we could say the total with no spillages is that I've taken out six, okay? So that makes sense. Which means after putting in, pouring in the six, I should still expect to be around one quart low. It's going to take me to about the same place. So with that knowledge, I can just go ahead and pour in one more to just top it up, you know, to just get it all the way up. Or I could just keep waiting and be patient and then check the dipstick. See if, if the oil that I added ended up bringing it anywhere closer to the dipstick check marks, okay? And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Nope, still looks mostly, it's all smeared up. So let me wipe it down first. Then check again. Kind of low. Look, it's right here. It's right here. So close to high. So. At this point, it would seem like I do have enough. But remember, I haven't really run the car yet. I haven't circulated oil through the oil filter, not with force. Right now, it's just depending on gravity to soak in. So what I'm going to do is start the car, let it circulate for a little bit, and then let it sit again. And then we'll come back and check it later. As I said, this is not a 10 minute oil change. This is not a $20, $30 special, no. This is a lot of dedication and a lot of analysis. All right, let me just leave it as it is for now. Start the car, run it. And then we'll come check it later. I, I anticipate needing to add a quart because I only added six and I know it was, I already know it was low. So we'll come back with that knowledge and top it up later. And that's it for me. I know it might not feel like it's run for a long time, but well, it ran and it's run, turning at thousands of uh, revolutions per minute, thousands of RPMs, right? So I know it's pumped whatever it needs to pump. I'm going to let it sit, give it its uh, 10, 15 minutes to sit down, and then I'll come back and check the level again. So for me, having run the engine, I can check it again because I know it was pressurized, that's clean. That's clean. That's clean. I know it's borderline compulsive, but we're good. So the next step for me is to go ahead and 
reinstall the undershield. We're fine. We're done here. Everything's good. All right, catch you guys later when we're checking that level for the umpteenth time. Might seem like a mundane task, but who wants to buy an engine because you're too proud to check your oil level two more times? Huh? All right, at this point, car sat for a little bit of time. Take it out, wipe it. check again so I took out almost six I put in exactly six and what do you know it's right at the bottom right there just a little over low so at this point it's pretty much where I got it but I think it needs a little more and I don't have my funnel now thankfully it's a little neck so I'll do my best to aim it in there don't lose too much. There you go. So at this point, I'm confident that I've gotten it. Once I let it rest, it should be right at the max level. All right, that does it. This one I'm not going to put any dirty oil in because there's no dirty oil to put in there. I've consumed, did I add, I think I added like in the, ever since the last oil change, I believe I've added half a quart of oil. So it's consumed a total of one and a half in, is that 10, 6,000, 6,000 miles, give or take? Yeah. So we're good. I'll check this later. Still needs time to sort in. So I'm just gonna go drive the car like normal, then we'll I'll check the level again tomorrow or so. This is just for video, but I already know my answer. Before the day ends, I know earlier I had mentioned that sometimes you can see the oil filter from up here. Well, you can see the oil filter, yeah, but the riding is where it gets a little tricky. Right now, the way this one ended up getting clocked is that I can see June 422, at least I know what that is but we've got a pipe in the way and I only see the last three digits out of six up there. Maybe if I change the angle a little bit, but again, it's not such a big deal. I already know what the number is, but I just wanted to show you that depending on how you do it, you might be able to read the numbers from up top. Sometimes I usually write the number this way so I can read it on the body, but then you never really know how it's going to stop.